and welcome to the very first episode on the Social Flux podcast series with me, Paige Tomlinson. Wow, that has been a long time coming, hasn't it? Literally feels like months ago when, well, it was months ago when I was planning all this to happen. Um, it has taken a few months to get the logo sorted, everything else sorted, um, get in touch with these studios, shout out to Liverpool Podcast Studios. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as I was like, um, planning the episodes and what I wanted to do and what guests I wanted to bring on I realised that most of the people who were probably going to listen and, and watch these podcasts are going to probably have never have heard of me or what I do or what I'm about so I thought with this very first um, episode I thought it'd be good um, to just talk through my life how I've got to where I am today um, so yeah, you just stuck with me for the first episode. I hope I don't bore you too much. Um, but I do apologise because I'm no professional at this. Like, this is still very new to me. Um, so yeah, each episode, I promise, will get better. Um, so yeah, we'll just take it back to high school, really, because I've never always wanted to be a DJ. Um, I went through high school always want- wanting to be a PE teacher. Um, I was just obsessed with sports, anything to do with sports, like I played for the footy team, I played for any team in school and yeah, all through high school I was just like, right, that's what I'm going to be, I'm going to be a PE teacher. Um, So left high school, went to sixth form, done my A-levels in um, sport, English language, psychology and business and within literally the first three months I was like failing failing miserably in business psychology um yeah I'm not I'm not the most intelligent person in the world but I still wanted to be a PE teacher so I carried on with my sport my English language and I picked up media instead because that was like the easiest really a level to do um so then a few more months down the line I was still failing miserably And I was just like, this just isn't for me. Like, it was just too hard. The the rate of work was just so fast. There was so much to learn. I just wasn't enjoying it at all. And I was like, I was was just feeling a little bit lost. So that's when I decided, no, like, swerve the PC chair. This is not for me. And that's, I was 17 then. So that's when I started going out. Um, I had a fake ID. Um, so I started going out to loads of local events. There was Mew Mew, Wax, uh, Low Life, and I was just getting introduced to all this like new music that I've never heard before. There was like house to house, minimal disco, and my mind was just like blown with the amount of music that like I've never heard. Like gr- going all through high school and stuff, I was. Um, I was in a friendship group and they like taught indie music and pop music and it was just never for me and I just, I, then I just felt a little bit lost so going into sixth form and meeting all these new people and getting a new friendship group and going out and getting introduced to all this type of music my mind was just like blown and um, from that I knew like instantly like I, I definitely needed like a job or a career or somewhat to do in the music industry. Um, so a few months down the line of going out every weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, draining my little body. Um, we got to December 2016 it was. And it's crazy because like I remember this day like it was yesterday. We was at um, Low Life, one of Lord and Low Songs events and it was still to this day it was like one of the best events I've ever been to in my life low life events always are up there with the best um and it was only like a proper intimate event it was it was in a local venue called blood and bandages so it well it's not around anymore but it used to be a little barber shop by day and then in the night it is it'd get turned around into like an event space and it it literally held literally about 40 50 people um but they always the best events were in there you'd have the best night so we was at low life the tunes were unreal i was just having the time of my life i was just falling deeper and deeper in love with like music and 
feeling so inspired and, and motivated and wanting to do something like a career and I just didn't know what it was that I wanted to do. So all night I was just watching the DJs and I was watching them on the decks and I was just, in my me, in me mind, I was like, what are they doing? What's that button do? Like, like just I was literally just glued to whatever they was doing. And coming to the end of the night, I think Lord and Lou sung, um, she was closing the night. And I remember watching her and she was just like amazing. She was an up and coming female DJ in Liverpool at the time. Um, and I just remember watching her and I was thinking, she is absolutely smashing it. What is stopping me from doing exactly what she is doing? And the more the night went on, I was thinking, there is actually nothing stopping me. And it was the last song of the night and it was Music Sounds Better With You by Stardust. And I was I, it, it was just like a proper epiphany moment and I was just thinking, this is it. Like, this is what I'm gonna do and this is what I'm gonna be and nothing is stopping me and nothing is getting in the way. And I have never felt like so motivated and inspired to do something in all my life. Um, so then from that, I just saved up all my money, all my wages every single month um, and decided to buy my own decks. Um, my first set of decks, it was only, I've still got them now actually, but it was only a controller. I think it was DZJ SX2, um, four channel little controller and honest to God, it does everything that it needed. So that's why I've not even upgraded because they're still fucking boss. Um, I bought myself speakers, a Mac, headphones, everything I needed. And for a year straight, I just cracked on and just learned basically through YouTube videos. Um, every single day, I was just, I wish I had that motivation now for certain things because back then, I, I literally every single day, I'd, I was working as a lifeguard <clears throat> at the time. And the hours were just proper. They were mad hours. I'd, I'd work from like six in the morning to like 11 o'clock at night. And I'd still get home at like 11 o'clock at night and jump on my deck straight away. And I don't know why my mum and dad didn't kick me out, to be honest, the noise. But yeah, they knew I was like motivated and this is what I wanted to do. So yeah, every single night, practiced for a year straight until I was like comfortable. Um, with uh, mixing, beat matching, everything. And then I'd done a mix. Um, and I was, yeah, I was confident with it at the time. I thought it was a boss mix. Um, probably listening back now, but it was probably fucking terrible. But we move. Um, but yeah, from that, I sent that mix out to a load of local events that I just wanted to play for. Um, and from that, a few weeks later, one of them messaged me and he was like, do you want to come down and play for our events on so-and-so days? And I was like, I just like, couldn't believe that someone actually wanted me to play like at their event. Like, my mind was blown. I didn't, like, in my head, I, th I, knew, I, I knew it was good enough, but I didn't, didn't know it was that good enough for people to want me to play. So I remember my first gig, it was in the Ship and Forecast in the basement. Um, if anyone's from Liverpool and knows it, it's proper, like grungy place um and I was I was I've never been so nervous in all my life I remember I was playing the warm-up set for like an hour and I was shaking I was like I couldn't even look up at people dancing on the dance floor because I was that nervous I was just like a robot like turning knobs and like oh my god I was just so nervous but from that People see me play and they must have liked what, what I'd done and what I played and what I was about. So from that, I got a few more gigs and then a few more gigs. And then a few months down the line or a year, I, I was playing like every single weekend, um, which is amazing because for someone who was just starting out, sometimes it does take a while to get going. And I appreciate everyone at the minute wants to be a DJ. And like, it, it's like... It's so, it's so hard to come across where someone doesn't really want to be a DJ, especially in Liverpool. Everyone just follows the crowd and wants to do what everyone else wants to do. 
Um, so yeah, I was just so grateful that I was getting the gigs in at the time for someone who was just starting out. Um, and from that, um, so we started in like 2017, two years on, 2019 it was. Um, I seen that Darius Rossian was doing a competition for his Moxie Music Night in Manchester. And I think one of my mates sent it to me and I just, in my head, I thought oh, well, there is absolutely no way I'd win it. There's probably absolutely thousands of people applying, but I'll just send a mix anyway and just see how I do. Like, there's no harm in trying. So I sent a mix in um, literally forgot all about it. And months later, I got a message from Darius on Instagram and I... I I think I could have fainted at the time. I was, like, shaking, like, my mind was on overdrive. I just could not believe. And he was like, hi, Paige, really enjoyed the mix. Um, I really want to consider you um, as one of the winners of the competition. And I, I literally had to read it about 10 times. I couldn't believe what I was reading. Um, so then, yeah, I was one of the winners and, and I won. And I came down to play at the, the first Moxie Music Night in Manchester and honestly it was the best gig i have ever played for in my life like the butterflies i got like while i was playing like the crowd was the best crowd i've ever played for like big up the manchester crowds because every time i played in manchester they have been wild um but yeah from that night darius um must have liked what, what i was about and, and what he heard and Luckily, he's kept me on for a few more gigs and I'm now one of the Moxie Music residents um, and I've played about three, four times now and every time has literally been unreal. Like, if you've not been to a Moxie Music party, you literally need to get your ass there right now. Well, after COVID. Um, but yeah, from that, I, I'm just so grateful that he's, he's kept me on as a resident because from, from them gigs... Um, I've came all other different types of opportunities, um, different gigs in Manchester. Um, but yeah, 2020 was meant to be like my biggest year yet, really. And yeah, this fucking COVID come along and just ruined it all, didn't it? But I was meant to be playing my first festival, El Dorado Festival. I was meant to be, I was venturing out to Liverpool and Manchester and I actually had gigs in Leeds and, and Newcastle and I was just so excited that like people around the UK like knew about me and knew my name and I was just buzzing to, to get down there and and just play me, play me sets and so people would know what I was about but unfortunately they never happened. But yeah, let's stop talking about that because I'll get too upset. Um, but yeah, hopefully, well yeah, after COVID, I will get them gigs again and I can play in everywhere you'd like me to play. Um, moving on. So that's how, like, my DJ career kind of started and how it, like, spiralled and to where we are today. I mean, I've, I've not really played a, a proper gig in the past year. I started playing a few socially distanced events, but they just wasn't the same, like... They were just very, especially when the, the restrictions changed and you couldn't, like, stand up, you couldn't, like, dance, you couldn't sing, and it was just getting a bit ridiculous. And I was like, it's just proper ruining the music scene, all these restrictions. So I think that's why a lot of music events have sort of reined it in a bit and just said, like, look, we're, we're going to just stop stop the events and we're going to just start back up again um, after COVID and when things go back to normal, which I 100% like understand because they was they was getting shit like no one was having fun people were just sat there basically just like wanting to dance and then just keep, like kept on getting told off by security so yeah why would you want to go out just to get told off by security but yeah um moving on really to where social flux was born because if someone would have told me about a year ago, I would have been sat here doing a podcast, talking to a camera in a mic by myself in a room. I would have thought they were messing because, like, that just that 
like it's just never been in my mind really that this is what I wanted to do. But it all started when the two lads at Svara Radio messaged me in August time. And they was like, we're starting a new radio station. If you want to come down and have a look, um, you're one of the people who we want on to start a show. Um, so, yeah, I was sort of a bit down in the dumps at the time when they messaged me. Like I had not played an event. I've not played music in weeks. Like I didn't really know where my career was going because of, like, all this COVID. Um, so I was, like, well up for it. I went down, looked at the studio. It's, like, right on the docks. And... Honestly, I just fell in love. It was just, it was like another epiphany moment. Like, I just knew this is, this was like the right place, the right time. This is what, like, I was going to do. So straight away, I was like, yes, sign me up. I am doing this monthly show. So started. And I was like, well, I sort of need a name to start off with. And I don't know whether I'm just a big weirdo or whether everybody else does this, but in my phone, I've got, like, I've got, like, a list on my notes of, like, all different um, words that I like. So I just clicked on my notes and I just, like, was scrolling through the words. Like, don't ask what other words are on there because I, I probably sound like a big weirdo now. But, um, yeah, and, like, I just really loved the, the, the word social. Like, whenever I see it anywhere, whether it's in, like, an event or a, a brand, I just think it really stands out. and It felt, like, really fitting for for the radio, really, because it is quite social. You're talking. Um, I was, I'm going to get guests on each month to do shows. Um, and, and back then, this podcast really wasn't a thought. Um, and then I thought flux was another one of the words as well. And flux has a few different types of meanings. Um, but the meaning that kind of stuck out for me was like it, it means changing all the time and that's exactly what I wanted my shows on Sfara to be I wanted them to be different every month I didn't want them to just be like the same shows I didn't want people to get bored obviously I wanted different guests on I wanted different music each month so I just thought that would be the perfect name Social Flux and yeah that's what I stuck with obviously but yeah funny story because Obviously, I picked my name and then I was telling my mum and dad about it. And for like, for weeks, my dad must have been sat there, like, thinking about it. And he come back to me weeks later and he was like, why have you called, why have you called it social fucks? <laughs> and I was like, what? Social fucks? No, no, no. I, like, I, he, like, bless him, he must have been lying there in a bed thinking, why is my daughter... Pick this name, <laughs> but yeah, cleared that up. Social flux, um, but yeah, moving on. A few months down the line, I was doing the radio shows on Sfara, and I was just constantly thinking, what else can I do with this brand? Like, I've I've got like a brand name now. Of like, I would just want to do something else with it. Um, so that's when I thought podcasts definitely because I don't know about anybody else but definitely with me during like these lockdowns I've just been feeling really like demotivated not inspired at all um so I've turned a lot of podcasts and, and listening to people's journeys and, and people's tricks and tips and stuff and and how they've got to where they are today and Every time I listen to one, it has just, like, really inspired me. I've come out of it. I'm like, right, I'm going to do this with me day. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. So I thought, well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I thought, each month on these podcast um, episodes, I'm going to get different guests in from the music industry who I think are absolutely smashing at the minute. Uh, and all of them who have personally inspired me. Um, and I'm going to get them on to talk about their journeys, their li life, anything they want to talk about, really, how they've got to where they are today. And hopefully um, they can have the same effect on you at home listening and they can inspire you as well. You'll, you'll come out the podcast and come, yeah, that, that's what I'm going to do this with me today. Or they might inspire you to take up a new hobby, start something new with your life. Um, 
but yeah, that that's sort of the reason why I thought I'll, I'd start these podcasts. Um. So, yeah, here we are, first podcasting. Um, feels pretty surreal because, as I said before, this has been a proper long time coming. Like every day, I've been like dreaming, planning how it's gonna be. I've been organizing the guests like each month um but yeah I am just so excited for you all to see like all these guests that I've got lined up for you because some of them are the I mean all of them they're so inspiring the journeys what they've been on um the first guest guest we've got in I thought it'd be really fitting to get the two lads from Sfada Radio in um because like without them I would never really be here today, sat doing my own podcast. Um, it was them who, who got me in and said, we want you on the show. And from that, I thought of the name, I wanted to do more with the brands. And from that, that's why I'm sat here today. So it'll be really interesting to listen to like their journey because they only launched for it in October, it was. So they haven't really been going for that long and they are already killing it. Um, so, yeah. Make sure that you catch um the second ep- episode, sorry, with the Svara lads because it will be a boss one. Um, but yeah, that's it from me really talking about my journey. I hope you've got sort of an insight of what I'm about and and my journey really and what what I want the Social Flux podcast series to be about. Um, because I am really excited. Um. And I just really hope it gets gets the response that I want because I am literally inside buzzing to like announce everything. Um, and what I ask is like, if you watch a if you watch an episode and you love it, please, 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 I would just appreciate it if you could share it on your story, like it, subscribe, anything. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your mates. Yeah. I just really appreciate it because I've just put so much work into it and I would just love for it to do really well. Um, But yeah, thanks so much for listening today and I'll see you on the second episode with Svada Radio. Thank you.